discuss electromagnetic induction and the first part of this is Faraday's law. So do you remember electric flux? We've done it before. The number of uh, electric field lines passing through an area perpendicularly. Number of lines passing through an area. We did the formula Ea and Ea cos theta. This will be exactly the same. So if I increase the flux, or if I increase the field strength, make more lines, I will have a bigger flux. If I make my area bigger, I can catch more lines, I will have a bigger flux. So if you think of a formula, I can simply multiply them together. Flux equals BA now, because it's a magnetic field, which is B. Electric field is E, magnetic field is B. We will do the dot product, BA cos theta because what we do is that we will see that we will take an angle from the normal because this is the area right if it was not from the normal it will be passing straight across it and um, if the line or in this case the b is passing through the paper we will take the angle from the normal you will get maximum flux when the face is perpendicular this is maximum flux cutting the whole paper just think about when I showed you the iPad and I'm blocking the sun with my iPad. I will put the face of the iPad in front of the sun. If I rotate it so the iPad is sideways, then I'm not blocking the sun. The sun will still reach both of my eyes. Not so good. So for that reason, we take our angle from the normal and we'll take the cos of the angle from the B and the A. B, A, cos, theta. If you wanted to see flux in a figure, it would look something like this. Flux is the number of lines passing through an area. I can choose an area. If I have chosen this, I have one line entering, one line leaving. Check this one. I have many lines entering. And this one, I only have two lines entering. Low flux, high flux, medium flux. It's all relative. So like I mentioned, the angle is always taken from the normal. Whatever my surface is, you will have an angle from the normal facing out surface vector. We will discuss this more in class during revision if you're still not entirely sure about this because you might get confused in the other one we use sine of the angle and so forth. So we will discuss this in class if you're not too sure. So this is the thing I was telling you about. If you have a field passing through the right you can see that if this is sideways the lines just pass straight across over the surface of it. It's not really catching any lines. They've drawn it thicker to make it easier for you to visualize. It's not actually blocking this line here. It's not got a thickness at all. It's just drawn like that so you can see that this is worse than this. This is catching all of the lines. So if you wanted to calculate the magnetic flux through them, if you have the B and you have the area, then we can just use the formula easily. Flux equals, well, this one is going to be zero because cos of 90 is zero. So this will just be zero. This will be flux equals, oh, what have I done? Flux equals BA cos 45. BA cos 45. So 10 times 10 to the minus 6. This means times 10 to the minus 6. And then area is 30 centimeters squared. So that will be times 10 to the minus 2 squared, which is times 10 to the minus 4. Keep that in mind, okay, if it's in centimeters and squared, that is. And that is what you'll put into the formula for this one. And also this one. This will be BA cos 90. I want you to try and solve it yourself. We have done this in class, but it's direct substitution. Uh, you will get another example. Something like this can come. You'll get the wrong angle. You may fall for this trap, like many of you have done previously. If you have an angle from the side to the B, that's not good. It should be from the normal, and the normal is pointing this way, or even this way. It doesn't matter. I've given the angle from this way, so I will use that normal from this side. So if this is 30, this must be 60. And the rest of it uh, is the same. You can have a, a, you've given a width and a length, you can find the area. Area equals length times width. That's easy. Must be in meters, though. 0 0.05 times 0 0.06. That will be my A. Then I can substitute it into the formula. So if the voltage across something, because obviously remember voltage uh, induces a current, uh, which has a magnetic field. If I increase the voltage, well, if I increase the magnetic flux, I should say, I will have maybe a bigger voltage or a smaller voltage. What do you think? 
What if I increase the time taken to pass through the coil? Will I have more or less? What if I increase the number of turns? Will I have more or less? Thinking about your answers to this helps us come up with a formula. A bigger change in flux means I have more voltage. Increasing the time means it takes longer for the change of flux to happen, so that's not so good. If it's fast, if you move a magnet very, very fast, you will have a bigger voltage. We did this in the lab. And if you increase the number of turns, that's great. More turns means you can induce a bigger voltage as well. So more turns is excellent. That takes us to a nice little formula that we did. EMF is the number of turns multiplied by the flux because this increases, this increases. If this increases, this increases. Divided by the time because if that increases, this decreases. EMF is negative N flux over time, or you can say negative N BA cos theta from the flux formula over time. It's negative because it's going in the opposite direction. It's going in, it's going in the opposite direction, if you remember that. It's always opposing the change. Okay? This is V volts. This is just N, it's number of turns. It doesn't really have a unit. And then we have a flux. Um, this can be Weber for flux. Or Weber per second if you use the two together. Weber per second, that's what they're saying if you combine the two together, which you probably will never have to do. So this is how you find the EMF. An example of this would be having a loop of 40 turns. You have a radius, and you have a field perpendicular. That's very nice. It takes 25 seconds to rotate to another position. So we can figure out the induced EMF. Uh, we can just do EMF equals negative N change of flux over time over time and I will go ahead and just put the numbers in if you wanted to do this we can do negative 40 multiplied by I don't have uh, the flux I do have BA so I can do B which is 0 0.02 multiplied by my area I don't have an area I have to find the area it's a radius which means it's a circle so I will have to do pi r squared I can do pi multiplied by r, which is 20 centimeters, 0 0.20 squared. N, B, A, cos theta. So if the radius is perpendicular to the field, what's my theta going to be? Not 90. You might think perpendicular 90. No. If it's perpendicular, my normal is facing out this way. My angle is 0. How did you not know that? You should know that. So I'll just multiply by cost of zero, or I do not need to do that because if you do cost of zero, you will get one. Okay, so keep that in mind. Putting all the numbers in, you'll get the answer. I'll let you figure that out yourself so we can move on with the lesson. So a rota rotating coil generator simply means this will spin. As it spins, I am changing the flux, the number of lines. That will induce a voltage, which will drive a current. So we can have a current flowing through here. Uh, so there's a small mention of Gauss's law which came before. If you remember, it's Q enclosed over epsilon naught. I'm not sure how this will be affected in ours, but I did explain this already to you uh, in the past. And we're not going to use EA, we're going to use BA. And the Q enclosed, instead of the Q enclosed, it's going to be the number of field lines, magnetic field lines passing through. So you might have a magnet uh, in this situation. So drawing any lines like this you can find the flux. As long as uh, you see a line, and the line's entering and the line's leaving, then you know the, the flux. Sometimes, as written in your textbook, it's slightly different. It's exactly the same formula. We just did the EMF equals B A cos theta. And remember, it was over time, right? Negative N over time. There, I've drawn it in a strange order. B, A, cos theta. If it's one loop, it has only one turn. So I don't even need to write the N. Okay. The only thing that will be a little bit different would be that if you see uh, a spinning, you can be given it as a function of time, which means you'll have a little torque involved. Same idea. B, A, sine theta multiplied by how fast it is spinning. So that is how you can calculate the uh, magnetic flux.